So in front of me, I've got the OVO 10s. These released at the OVO pop-up shop out of the blue just the other day. They showed up here at Riff for $5,500 and $7,500. And they're outrageously priced shoes, but the hype for them is like no other. You know, going back to the M&M 4, which was the first Air Jordan collaboration with an artist, the Air Jordan collaborations with artists are on a whole nother level, like a whole nother level. And most of them don't get released to the public. So it was a big surprise in Los Angeles when these shoes were made available out of nowhere. And they retailed for $225. You can see the resale, like we said, $5,500 and $7,500. There's also some OVO 12s. Those ones haven't yet released. But, you know, going back to that M&M 4, and then some of the other shoes that are collaborations with artists, like all of the Yeezy Nikes and the Yeezy Adidas, it's like they're getting up into these four-digit price points. And, and these have like, like a Stingray kind of material on them. Yeah, it's almost like a Stingray material. When I look at the upper, it reminds me of caviar, actually. <laughs> this is the first time that I've ever had these shoes in my hands, and they just don't do it for me. To be honest, like, I'm all about the OG colors, the ones that Michael Jordan actually wore and played in. And for Nike, this big conglomerate to just make a shoe and make it so limited and then tie it to an artist that happens to be the most popular artist. Like for me, I'm not buying it. I wouldn't spend five or $7,000 on a pair of shoes like this. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a pair that people really don't wear out because it's so expensive. Like, you know, once you get into this price range, it's pretty much just goes on your shelf. <laughs> I mean, the only people I see wearing these shoes are the perfect pair. Oh, right. Like that guy rocks these shoes, but yeah. other than him, do you feel like, you know, like, like just blaze talked about this not too long ago that there's a problem with sneakerheads not wearing their shoes? No, I don't. I, I think that there are all different kinds of sneakerheads. Some sneakerheads are purely collectors. Some sneakerheads love to wear everything. Some sneakerheads are somewhere in the middle. For me, I've always looked at shoes as an investment, even though now it's difficult to think of them that way because mm -hmm. the resale market these days is not like it once was. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like the moment you put a shoe on your foot, it's not something that you can resell right. at a profit. So there's shoes that I would keep dead stock and keep as an investment, and then shoes that I would buy to wear. Jada Kiss, man. Mm. That dude is old school dude, you know, OG in the game. So he got stuff for years that you haven't even seen. Oh, my favorite sneaker, the, uh, the all black sixes, the, 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 the original jump off from the, from the championship and shit like that. Those are my favorite releases, but I got a, I got a pair that I didn't have for so long that I just, I play ball with them still sometimes. I wear them out, they just, they twisted, but they from the first era of them, so you know. 